Hi, welcome to this talk through video of Engine Prime. This is Denon DJ's music analysis and library management software designed to integrate perfectly with their brand new Prime series of hardware, the SC5000 Media Player. And the reason you need the software is that this is the best place for you to prepare and analyze your tracks and your playlists. And then what you do is you export them to a drive of your choice put that drive in the player and all of that information will be carried through to the player so you can perform just straight off of a USB. But this is where all the preparation happens. And this type of software will be familiar to people who have used Pioneer Club Gear before and have prepared their tracks in the Rekordbox software, but probably unfamiliar to controller DJs who are used to a kind of full feature DJ software where you can actually mix tracks together and stuff like that. So it's somewhere between that, but the main primary purpose is to actually prepare your tracks to use with the Prime Gear. So this is not a full review, this is just a quick feature run through just so you can get a quick look. Uh, and first impressions are it looks fantastic. It's got a touch of the Spotify feel to it. I think that's a lot to do with the kind of lime green color which you can see. Uh, uh, which they use uh, both in their kind of main branding but also in the waveforms as well. And uh, the whole thing looks really slick, really modern. We're, we're very, very impressed with it so far and, um, and it works really well. So not going to spend too much time going through the features in detail here, just going to show you quickly. So the bottom part of the screen here is the collection. So these are all the tracks that I've already brought into my engine collection. And you can see here that I've also created some crates. So these are larger, not the full collection, but still large collections of tracks that I want to maybe pull from to make playlists. So I've got 80s tracks and then underneath it, I've got 80s pop and 80s soul. So you can configure this how you want. And you can see here that I've pulled some tracks from iTunes. And uh, if I move over here to this middle icon here, this is where your iTunes library is. So just like DJ software, it's fully integrated with your iTunes library and also fully integrated with your Serato library. So you can actually bring tracks in from your Serato crates as well, which is pretty cool. This is where your main uh, computer's folder structure will be. So if you've got tracks saved, uh, if your music uh, collection is saved other in a place other than iTunes or Serato, then you'll be able to find that here. And then this last little icon here, the little USB drive, click that and that opens up devices. So any devices that you've got connected to your computer uh, will show up here and this is where you can actually decide which playlists and which crates you want to move across to your device which you can then take across to the player. So moving up to the top, let me just talk you through what we've got here. Up on the top left, this is showing you all the track information of the track that's loaded into the player at the top here. And uh, so you've got the cover artwork, you've got the BPM, this is the analyzed key, uh, and this is the, the track rating, which you can change here, or you can actually change it down in the library as well, wherever you want. And the analysis of tracks was very, very quick, really, really quick, in fact. Uh, it, there's no time at all to analyze tracks, and for the most part, it gets the grids and everything pretty perfect. There was only a little bit of adjustment that was needed. So if you do need to adjust the grid on your track for your beat grid, that is this little icon here, and then this moves into uh, beat grid adjust mode, so I can actually move that grid along if it's uh, not got the first beat right. Really simple, and also, I had a play with doing elastic beat gridding, which was basically putting a beat grid on a track which was played by a live drummer, and uh, it's pretty amazing how it actually does it uh, in this software. It's definitely the best I've seen at uh, handling elastic beat gridding and also handling the syncing of tracks that are uh, you know, uh, played by live drummers but then synced in the software and kept tightly locked to another track. It really is fantastic, so uh, they've done really well here with that. The last little icon that you can see here is the looping area. So this is where you can play around with loops while you're rehearsing and listening to your tracks. And if you like them, you can actually save them. And I'll show you where you save those in just a second. Moving up to the top here, you can see these little uh, boxes, intro, baseline, break, and outro. Now these are actually hot cues. So I've already saved these. So Decide where you want to put your hot cue in your track, drop it onto an empty slot. So if I decide I'm going to put one there and I want to use this slot for it, click it and it just gives it a number to begin with but then you can right hand click it 
and you can give it a name and you can also select the color and all of those colors of the hot cues will be pulled through to the media player as well when you export your tracks and import them into the device. So hot cues, really cool. You've got eight there uh, to use and up here you can actually also save eight uh, loop points. So again, you can name them. So I've got a loop here called Vibes. and also one called High Guitar. And if I want to set a new loop, I just go to the place where I want to, where I want to start it. There, for example, and I can hit the loop button and it actually now starts a loop in point. And this is also the way to do manual loops. So if I start to drag it now, you'll see that I can choose my out point and that's it, it's now saved that loop. And the same again, you can actually uh, name the loop to whatever you want. So really cool features up here. Uh, just thinking if there's anything I've missed out. Okay, over here on the right, we've got the more track information for the time here, and also there's a, a sync button. So this may be, uh, make you think, well, why is there a sync button on track preparation software? Well, I'll show you. Up here, you've got a button for dual layer. So if you click that, it now gives you an extra deck, in effect. And uh, you can actually have a track on each deck. So let me just find something that's going to uh, be suitable here. I'm going to go to my house tracks playlist. I'm going to choose this track drop it on and now you can see I've got a track on each deck. So I can do preparation on this track as well in this deck. So I'm going to go to cue points here, set a cue point there for an intro. Okay, and now if I want to, I can actually do some mixing with these tracks and just do some rehearsing by syncing them with each other. So now I've clicked sync there and you can see that it's set the tempo to one, two, six on that track shows how it's adjusted it and shows that the key is locked here as well and I can switch key lock on and off there. So I can actually play around with these tracks to do some rehearsing of mixing if I want to. And I can actually fade between the tracks here with this little fader on the right. So even though it's not full DJ software and I've got no mixer controls, I can't control you know, the bass, the treble or you know, uh, anything else like that, I can still rehearse uh, some mixes whilst I'm preparing tracks. So I can do a bit of DJing whilst I'm preparing tracks as well and it helps get those creative juices flowing. And with this deck, I can go into each of those different areas that I showed you up here as well with the track info, the grid info and the loops. You can set loops down here. So very, very cool. One little thing that wasn't obvious is that to switch sync off here, I have to actually hold shift and click the button to switch it off. I would have thought you'd have just clicked it and it would have switched it off, but uh, we had to find out from Den on how you do that. So yeah, hold down shift to switch off sync there. So I'm gonna go back into single layer mode now. So I think I've shown you everything that there is to show up on the player. Uh, now further down here, I'm gonna show you what happens when you wanna actually put your tracks onto a device. So I've just opened up the device window here and it's got my uh, drive that's actually connected to the computer called Engine Prime and you can see I've got my playlists in here. So over here on the left I've got this new playlist, it's got nothing in it at the moment so I'm just going to go to my um, collection. These tracks that I've just pulled from iTunes I'd like to actually put those into that new playlist so just hover over to new playlist, drop them in there, it now shows that I've got those six tracks in there and then I can pick that playlist up and move it over to this window here on the device. And you'll see at the bottom, it's giving me the progress bar for packing playlists and it's moving those tracks over to the device now. And there you go, it's actually on the device. My new playlist is there and you can check that the tracks are inside it. Now here in the devices, you'll see that there is a little person logo. So this is to set a personal profile and this has got some very cool features inside it. So what this is doing, to just to be clear, this is actually setting up uh, a profile for you, which is the profile for the player itself. So this is for the SC5000 media player, that when you put your drive into the player, 
you can actually select to import these settings and it will change all the settings of the player so they are perfectly set up the way that you would want it to. So how you want the track position, uh, where, where you want the track start position to have, the dis default uh, tempo range on the fader, default sync mode, your quantization for loops, um, hot cue behavior, loop size, um, all loads of different format, um, things to play around with here, including the track end warning. Um, uh, you can lock the playing deck to stop you from actually dropping a track on the deck accidentally. You can knock the, uh, lock the needle lock to prevent you from accidentally jumping forward in the track. You can actually switch off all of the pads on the player as well. And then you've got other settings in here like library, the, your preferred key no notation, uh, the key filter. So actually when you're filtering tracks on the player, you can actually um, set it so that it either filters by tracks that are exactly the same key or in tracks that are in compatible keys. This is the BPM range, so you can set a BPM range for tracks when they analyze uh, actually in the player itself. Uh, tolerances for the BPM when you're playing around with filters, so lots and lots of stuff here that you can configure just personally to how you like it. Uh, and also the actual deck colors as well, so you've got eight different colors to choose from. And uh, as you will see in the, in the review of the SC5000, you actually have two layers per player. So one player can actually be, can be playing two tracks, so you can actually set a different color for each one of those layers. And you can do it in here, and all of that information can be carried through uh, to the device, uh, to the player when you actually put your, your USB stick in, so that's pretty cool. And also, just lastly, there's a few other um, uh, more simple performance things that you can set up here and this is actually for the software itself so uh, your buffer size, sample rate, where you want the, the music to play out from uh, and some simple things about track start position but these are individual to the actual Engine Prime software and not to be exported to the actual uh, player. So it's a pretty quick talk through, I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, you know we really love this whole new Engine Prime and uh, you know, Denon DJ Prime system that they've brought out, it really is a game changer. And this software is really only version one. There are a couple of things that we would like to have seen in here, uh, mainly tagging of tracks. Uh, at the moment, it's uh, pretty, pretty simple. You've just got um, genre. You can actually put comments in, but uh, I would like to put tagging for things like you know, vocal track or saxophone track or, you know, whatever tagging it is that you want to do so you can really you know, drill down and refine your, your searches when you're searching for tracks when you're actually in the middle of a DJ set. But apparently that's coming very soon, so that, that's, uh, that's not too far away. Um, but really, uh, it's a, a fantastic first, um, first release of this software. Improvements are coming soon, uh, and uh, we're, we're loving it so far. So if you've got any questions, don't forget to ask uh, below the video. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk through of Engine Prime.